Okay, today we are going to tie a parachute Tasmanian Devil. If you love the Tasmanian Devil fly, go ahead and hit the like button. Drop a comment how you like fishing that, that Tasmanian Devil. I think it's a great attractor pattern. We're going to see what it turns out to be as a dry fly. So this is obviously a fly that you can definitely do yourself. You can tie these up. Anyone can tie them if I can. But we're going to start off with a size 14 fire hole sticks 419 in the vise. Just your favorite standard dry fly hook. And I'm going to start off with some 10 aught Vivas. This is a D25. It's kind of just an olive color. So I like to start about a third of the way back from the uh, from the hook eye. That just let, gives me kind of a, a point there that I can reference as a point that I don't want to go past. Um, but I know that my parachute post can get tied in a little bit. A little bit too crazy there with uh, with that thread, but that's all right. I'm gonna cover it up with dubbing. So the tail on Tasmanian Devil is glow bright. This is number five. It is a fire orange, fluorescent fire orange. So I'm just gonna take. I like to make four strands for a size fourteen. And just kind of keep them all together there. Oh, my thread would need a little adjusting. Okay. This fly does have a copper rib. So I'm using some small copper. For making this a dry fly, I might even use like a simper fly, like a 0 0.01. Just to keep it extra thin, keep as little weight as possible on this. So that would be more similar to like an extra small in the UTC. Go ahead and come up here now and get my my parachute post tied in. I you've watched many of these, the McFly lawn. I really enjoy that material. See it just comes in these little clumps. There's kind of all these fibers are all attached together. I think it kind of helps with tying stuff in. I just get a couple nice tight wraps around and then I kind of then I pull it out the side always a couple wraps then get some then get some thread tension and just on each side to lock those those wraps in and then here I'll make a real loose trim loose or it's just kind of long trim and this is where then I start doing kind of those under wraps um, almost like uh, dumbbell eyes kind of how you go underneath those I just do a couple wraps and I like to hold on to it and give it some tension. I don't want to pull on my thread when I don't have a hold of that because you'll just fold that over and all your wraps will come out. But I want to have decent thread tension. back 
down, wraps on each side, really lock that in place. If you need to, I mean, you could put some super glue on that. So before I tie in my hackle, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to dub the body. Just get that body all, body all dubbed up to the back of here, wrap my wire to the back, tie all that in. Then I'll get that, uh, that hackle in. Um, for this fly, any natural hair, hair's ear dubbing for that body. But I really like this bug dub with a little bit of SLF. It's, it's nice and buggy, but it does have just a tiny bit of flash. You can see it, it stays pretty true to just a natural hair's ear, uh, especially when you're getting it on really thin. But it does just ever so slight bit of that SLF prism dub in there that just gives it just a little something extra. And for whatever reason, I feel like I can really make really nice dubbing noodles with this with this stuff so i would definitely say go give it a try go with this noodle for now see where it gets us I'm gonna try to keep fairly thin body But we want to make sure we don't have like a reverse tape. So just keep really, really thin on this dubbing noodle. This will all work out nicely. I just want a little bit more right there behind the. Find that post. All right, that's good. Now I am going to go ahead and wrap this wire forward. Some nice tension there, so we just helicopter that out. The small wire helicopters really nicely. Let me make a couple more wraps right where that stuff would be. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this tail. I like to put my scissors right on the back of the hook. And just move them slightly back from there. There's my tail. I will take some hackle pliers and then just grab those. And then I can just keep those for the next fly. So now that we are up here, we are going to grab just a brown hackle. Um, and you can see we're kind of really just following the, the footprints of that uh, Tasmanian devil fly. So this is going to kind of be, instead of a CDC collar, we're using a dry fly hackle. So, so we're just going to go with just a brown hackle. I like to do one wrap like that to kind of get uh, 
get it tied down in front of the post and then here's where it can do that over again there we go I want to try to not have this thing spin on it When it spins on you, it can really start to cause some issues. Stay over here. That should be good. Come down here and then get a couple wraps let's see if I can get out of the way a couple wraps there in front of the parachute that helps kind of lock that that stem in and we can come in here and trim that off real close as close as you can then we should be able to parachute that but this is one thing that kind of was a little bit more difficult to think about. The blow or blowtorch, the similar to a blowtorch, but the Tasmanian Devil has a light pink tungsten bead on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just use some fluorescent pink, the 70 denier, uh, just because that's what I got. You could use, um, well, if I could, I, I would use some 10 odd uh, just to keep things small so i'm going to use the pink thread let's get this other thread out of the way bring it back and the tasmanian devil has an, a peacock ice stub collar around it so we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to get just try to be as thin as possible with this ice dub. Really just, well, there, I'm just dropping it everywhere instead of actually dubbing something. For some, whatever reason, my peacock ice dub uh, has been very uh, stringy and not very, it's been harder to dub than any of my other Ice dubs. Okay. I'm going to just start with, try to be so small with this. I'm just going to try to get a little bit right there and then right up here behind the, the hook eye. It's going to make a little hot spot uh, thread collar here there we go i'm just going to use a tiny bit so that's going to be our what our bead was just have a little bit of pink on this fly kind of as a trigger hopefully and then we're going to just try to get this to be a small uh, ice dub that right around there like that. See how that looks. Okay. And now we can take that thread around there. That is good and trapped around that post. 
come in here. Get that out. And now, kind of thin this down so hopefully this tackle will parachute nicely. always the question it seems there we go I wasn't laying them underneath I was laying them on top of each other good wraps in there and then here just take that thread I like to do some wraps on top and then come underneath it do a couple wraps underneath end with that thread in the back so there I can put the hook to the side like that and come in here trim that off close I can do now I like to come and do my final trim on my post I like to give it a little twist here and then about like that and now you can either do the super glue method however you like finishing out your parachutes so here I'm going to move it to where you can almost not see it And come in whip finish underneath that on the parachute post. It's a good way to do it. You trap some, you can, it's possible to trap some fibers. But just kind of be careful. Take your time. And I don't know if that was, the, <laughs> that was probably not the best example of a whip finish. I'll just do another one real quick. Just kind of make sure that's tight, tightens up. I like to kind of just put it back, put the hook back to a normal position. And then there's my tying thread way over here. And just, I like to just follow that thread. That helps me not trim a bunch of tackle fibers. I do have some other fibers that are just bothering me. Wouldn't really have to do anything with those. You know, it kind of keeps things buggy. But that is a Tasmanian Devil parachute. If you, again, if you love the Tasmanian Devil nymph, go ahead and give this fly this video a like and drop a comment on how you like to fish that and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.